appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 59. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very, very, very special guest in the building for episode 59. Welcome home, Rock. Introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, appreciate it, man. My name is Ken Rock. I'm from North Philadelphia. Um, Life Coach Rock. I'm on Instagram at I am, Co- I am underscore Coach Rock R O C. Um, the last 15 years, I've been uh, locked up in federal prison. I've been home now, going on a month. Uh, I'm out here, you know, I, while I was in prison, I grew mentally, you know, spiritually, emotionally. So what I'm coming home now with a goal to, you know, to spread this um, information and to spread this um, inspiration, hopefully, to the youth and to, the, you know, people in the community and just, you know, walk down a whole other path, as well as give an understanding on the mentality and the, um, the reality of people that's in prison. So, all right, copy that. Rock touched it on it a little bit. We're going to get into it after we hit the rundown. Got to say this first. I know this episode ain't going to come out to a couple weeks after this happened, but my uncle just passed today. So, RP, um, RP Shakri, oh, uh, he ain't making it, he couldn't make it to Ramadan, but I'm saying, how did he like get to Jenna? Um, now let's hit the run, let's hit the rundown. E Block Radio Network every Monday on the E Block Radio Network. That is 2 p.m. Uh, Tuesdays, the GFT Radio Network, 2 p.m. Wednesdays, we now got a Wednesday situation. We now got a Wednesday situation. I will let y'all know when I make the announcement official, but we have something for Wednesday. Shout out to Cleveland. Uh, Thursdays, we have WTNUPhilly.com every 12.30. 12.30 on Thursdays. Fridays, the I Say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m. on the I Say Podcast Radio Network, and the THC Media, THC Media on Saturdays at 10 a.m. All right, run down the joints. Custom Hustle, Custom Hustle, close. Custom Hustle. Co is on Twitter. It's Custom Hustle World on Instagram. That's the clothing line. You get your sweatsuits, you get your shirts, you get your hoodies, your jackets, uh, t-shirts, however you need it. Uh, the jerseys too. And um, H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. You follow that at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. It's a tri-state area situation. All right, let's go, Rock. Both sides of the wall is this week's topic. Uh, this is kind of self-explanatory. The noise in the background that you hear is because this is how real it is. Rock just touched down. And we're going to explain to y'all how both sides of this shit work. I really wanted to get a woman on here to do this episode with, but that's what you know, how the podcast drive through, how we work this situation out. We will get one on for the next time to talk about how they view this whole situation. So, Rock, this is what I need you to break down for us initially. The first yeah. year, the first year on your side of the wall, how is that to for you to adjust and adapt on your end of the wall? And then I'll give it to you on this end of the wall. All right, we're going into prison. Um, I was 24 years old when I when I went to prison. You know what I mean? Um, I got served 20 years. So mentally, you know what I mean? To be 24 years old with a 20 year sentence, it's like you know, really like um, kind of like you really can't see it. 2022 is so far gone that it's not even a possible date to even look forward to then. So um, mentally, it's just like the depression sort of state, like. Anybody you involved in, it's like a pity party. You're looking for a pity party. You're looking for people to cope with you and, and fight the battle with you. To, to put it to a retrospect, my nephew, my, my sister just hit me yesterday. My nephew go to trial. He start trial tomorrow for homicide. So she telling him that he want her to read the discovery. But I got to let him know that your mom not going to read the discovery. You feel what I'm saying? He looking for somebody to be in the fight with him because he need that with him emotionally to feel like he got to f- he got a squad with him he got somebody with support him system, yeah. work, a support system to go with him because right now he's feeling down about himself that's how i felt so when situations good situations came to me i kind of ran those situations away with you know um i don't want to say negative but with guilt with with with, with grief with, with bad emotions, you know what I'm saying? Like with, you had pain that you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't express the fact that it was pain on you because you just wasn't exactly. mentally there yet. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know how to express the feelings that I was feeling, so it just came out of nowhere. I, it was an emotional need that I was seeking, but I did not know how to seek it. 
So a lot of times when dudes get locked up and they're in that first year, especially if they got ticked, they still going through that. So they're looking for that reinsurance. They're looking for that affirmation. So they're looking for those visits. They're looking for that phone call. They're looking for those pictures because they want somebody, they want to know and turn. It ain't about the physical pictures. It's about getting your name called. You know what I mean? For, at the mail line. Thompson, you got mail. Boom, you want to feel like shh, they love me out there. I'm still somebody. And when you don't get that, you feel the complete opposite of that. You understand what I'm saying? All right. So now let me give it to you from the other end. Year yeah. one. See, for me, give you a little bit of the rundown for me, for the listening audience. For me, I met, I'm the guy who 14 of my homies is in jail. And I'm sitting at the table with 14 envelopes and 140 pictures going. These two is in the same jail, so don't send them the same pictures. He going to get these joints different than he going to get them. He's going to sell his pictures, so let's send him the better. I'm that guy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so this is why I asked you to get an audience to view from your end of the first year. Because for the first year, it's all love, and everybody's everybody's willing to pitch in that first year when they know, damn, Rock just got a, the Rock just got a dub. That first year, everybody's still keeping your name alive. Yeah. And you get that kind of energy as far as, yo, we got to send cut some money or whatever. Everybody's still with it. Now we go to year five and year 10. And what are you getting on the other side? Or even before we even get to there, do you still, did you still feel like you were still getting your love and your name was still out there that first year? Because I feel like, um, when, I feel like on my end, when I reach out to everybody in the squad and say, yo, look, Cousin, he's this, that, or whatever. That year, year one, everybody's still with it. Yeah. I feel like, see, me personally, I was in a blessed situation. I had like um, a knit, I got a good family. I got a good knit of real ones. You know what I mean? That never wavered the entire 15 years I was in prison. So I'm, I didn't feel, I never felt like nobody cared. I felt like um, a lot of my first year was, the regrets of me on things that I did, like leaving my sons out there. I had three sons. My oldest son was five at the time. My middle son was a month years old. My youngest son wasn't even born yet. So a lot of the things that I dealt with emotionally was me. Like, damn, I left my kids out there. You know what I mean? And then growing, being young. So I didn't never feel unloved. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I always felt like I had no love to give back. I had no reciproc I had no route to reciprocate that love, mm. which made me feel bad. If a female was doing something for me, damn, how do I show her that I appreciate it? My homie doing things for me, damn, how do I show him that I appreciate it? Because I don't have an income. And then at the time, you're thinking that everything, the only way you can reciprocate love is through financial things. So you don't have that. You, can, you know what I mean? A letter, you'd be like, all right, I'm writing him a letter, but when do that matter? Send him an email, what do that matter? Give him a phone call, what do that matter? But these is the only ways that I can reciprocate it. So now that I'm not able to, I more so don't even want to ask for nothing. You know what I mean? I'd rather go to the kitchen and work. Because All right, so I got another, I got a homie. Like I said, I, I've yeah. been there, 14 homies in jail. Yeah. And he's yeah. in. My one homie, he gets booked, he ain't calling ever. He yeah. gonna go, you going to find out, bro went to jail, you going to find out when he came home. Like that year, yeah. snow it snowed twenty something inches a couple times. Bro walked home in the snow. <laughs> right? yeah. They told him you can get out today, you can get out tomorrow. He said, "Fuck it." But um, yeah, yeah, like I got that homie who he ain't calling for nothing. Yeah. And the, the problem in that situation, this is why I wanted to do both sides of the wall. The problem with that situation is we don't know what's going on with you now. Yeah, understanding you got your own process to go through and all of that. Because even if you take it to like, if you worry too much about your girl. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Somebody tell you, yo, I seen her now such and such. It could have been a kosher situation and nothing going on, but all you're going to do yeah. is think about it. All you got time to do is think about it. Yeah. Your son scrape his knee. Yeah, you know, you got your man that you can sit down there, but it ain't the same thing as you being down there. Because yeah. I even, I've been in that situation where it's, I just need you to take care of my son. I need you to check yeah. in on my mom. I need you to check in on my girl. I left my man left some money and told me get this to my baby mom and when it run out it run out but this you know what I'm saying like yeah. ration it out to give this to my kids yeah. so like when y'all don't reach out from that side it then leaves us with the same thing that you got all it is is time for us to think about well what the hell is going on because I've also had the situation where my man got twenty to forty when we he was seventeen he got twenty to forty yeah. 
he told us they had a uh, they go to war with the COs. He's sitting on the toilet in the in the hole eating toilet paper for two weeks because they wouldn't yeah. feed him. They got him a hunger strike. We don't know that though on this end of the wall. If you bottle that all up and try to deal with it on your own, the thing that nobody realizes on the other side of the wall is we're going through something too. It's not the same yeah. situation that you're going through. But if we really love you and we taking that ride, like you said, I got 15 years and my man take the whole twist. I got 20 years and my man take the whole drink. We going through something, not the same. We're not going to try to even comp- make them two situations the same. But yeah. we got something that we're dealing with as well. Yeah, I understand that perfectly. You know what I mean? From the outside. But in there, it's like, you know how your life go on out here? Like your life go on. You get married, you got kids, you meet new guys, you meet new friends. And there you start to rely on the dudes that you meet in there. The closest dudes I got to my heart now are dudes that I met in there. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I got homies that, but for the last 15 years, we don't really know each other. We just hold on to what we have. And at the, if, the, if the core of that relationship was, was, was all good, the foundation of that relationship was good, then it's still there. If the foundation of that relationship wasn't on nothing that I'm on now, then it's already done. But the core relationship that I got with dudes in prison is all good. It's, it's Dean, it's kids, it's, it's things that is, you know what I mean? Mental strength. So a lot of those, yeah. yeah, it's growth. So a lot of those times, like your man, like he not, he just, it's sometimes it's just safer and better to shut the, shut the shutter and just do your time because you're going to do your time with dudes doing their time. Like, even though like fans say you got married, you did, right? You got married, right? Well, who did you? Somebody got married. Yeah, got uh, yeah married. you got married. You sent your brother the pictures. Boom, mm-hmm. right? I want to see those pictures book, but I'm not going to be a hundred percent happy. You understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna be happy for you, but it's gonna be a missing piece. Like, damn, I wasn't even out there to see my man get married. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I want to see the pictures when my son graduates. Damn, my son graduate. I'm high, more high. I'm more like an 80% high because 20% is, damn, I want to leave out there to see my son get, you know what I mean? Graduate. Mm-hmm. And then it gets to the point where you start to understand like, damn, all right, I wasn't out there to see my dad graduate and see my son graduate, but my son wasn't out there to have his dad see him graduate. Mm-hmm. So you start to understand like, not what you missing, but what he missing. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, so it, now... That that you threw in there, that's the yeah. thing that happens with the growth. Is also understanding that life do still go on for everybody else outside, and it is not just stuck in a situation like you talking about a friendship. Yeah. You and your man who we was ripping and running. You said you was twenty two when you fell. Twenty four. I was twenty four. Just turned twenty four. All right, so you turned twenty four when you fall, which means y'all young, dumb, and reckless. Yeah. So any conversation that you have with him reminiscing on remember when this did so that what happened, we talk about when we was young, dumb, and reckless. Yeah. And so in his mind, he's always has you as the 24-year-old. In yeah. your mind, you kind of still stuck at 24 with him in the conversation, even though you could be growing from that. Yeah. But even in this situation is like, how do you even articulate and tell him that? Like, yo, like I ain't really even on that type of time. Like, because yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what ended me up here. Yeah, I think, like, because dudes grow out here, too. Like, I'm running across dudes that, you know, I, I did junk them, but, with, but grew, too, out here. Mm-hmm. It's just a different, they took a different route to grow. Responsibilities, family, kids, stuff like that. The route that was different from mine. But it's different, like, I noticed, like, when me and my youngin, or he, I can't even call him my youngin no more because he's a grown man. You feel what I'm saying? But Oh, but when we used to, when I used to talk to him from the phone, he was growing up, so it was like a disconnect. You know what I'm saying? Like, you in jail, you talking jail talk, or, you know what I mean? I'm still talking to him like the younger. But now, since I've been home and we've been talking, sometimes we talk, we don't even want to get off the phone. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because we talking and we talking as grown men. You know what I'm saying? I might got some information on something he trying to do. He got information on thing I'm trying to do. So I think when you reconnect out here, it's more prevalent or more um, solid than when you reconnect on them jail phones. Because the physical and the, yeah, it's just different. Something you just touched on. I got a cousin. My cousin gets booked when I'm seven. He come home for a year when I'm 17. 
Yeah. He go right. He go right back up top. Now he come home. I'm 34. So me and him yeah. having a conversation a little bit before he come home. He's telling me something, and I'm like, "Cause I don't know if you recognize this, but I'm a grown man. <laughs> like, yeah. I got kids. I got a wife. Like, I got a lot going on. Like, yeah." <laughs> I'm not looking for you to, I'm telling you this because I know this and I've been through this and like, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to give you a little game for you coming home this time and it's like, look, you can't go right back to the dumb shit that you was doing before to end you up right back in the situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. trying to get him to, like you say, he didn't see any of the growth. He sees it through pictures and hear it through phone calls, but it ain't the same thing as physically being there. Yeah. So like, trying to get him to understand that and he's like I, like yeah you're right type thing because like i said he's in jail i was seven when he first gets locked up yeah like, yeah but, i understand that perfectly i go through that like not to pitch you on that level but my son he's five he's 20 mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so for a long time i looked at him as a five-year-old boy a long mm -hmm. time but now when i come out now he's driving he's whipping in school he, you know what I'm saying? He, he's 20 years old. He was the age I was when I was getting locked up. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. I got to respect that too. But it it take that takes growth on our side, inside of the wall. Because don't get it confused. Everybody's not growing inside of the wall. A lot of people are still staying 20 inside of the wall. You feel what I'm saying? Because they're not putting mm -hmm. themselves in the mental conversations. They're not surrounding themselves with people that's going to force them to grow. A lot of the conversations in jail is bull crap. You know what I mean? So dudes, everybody's not growing in prison. So when dudes come home and do the same thing, it's like, you know what I mean? Muhammad Ali got a quote where he say, uh, show me a man who look at life from the same age at 20, then he look at it the same age as 50. And I'm going to show you a man who wasted 30 years of his life. A lot of dudes is wasting 10, 20, 30 years of their lives. And not just in there, but out here as well. You know what I'm saying? Copy that. It's one of them things I always say. Some people mature yeah. and some people have birthdays. Because <laughs> yeah. like March 15th is going to come every year. It doesn't mean that you got any more mature. It just means March yeah. 15th can come. Or whatever your birthday is. <laughs> exactly. Now, this is something, since you touched on this, this is something that I want to hit on too. What causes somebody on the other side not to grow? What they um, you got, Let's say somebody who does a somebody, he 18 and gets dime. So he's going to come home yeah. and still be young. He's going to come home and be 28, 29. What yeah, causes him like, to waste that 10 years and not do anything to grow in his situation? All right. This this my perception on it. And, um, like, my perception on it, and it is just basically going, like, um, dudes that come from the areas that we come from. You know, they black dudes come from the areas that we come from. My perception on that is dudes still, we when we grow up, we grow up with division. You know what I mean? We go up with the real nigga vision, right? And a real nigga do certain things. He don't do certain things, and he do do certain things, and certain things fit into that criteria. So for a long time, we grew up with the um, the drive, ambition, and the desire to become him. And going to prison is a part of that. But doing the things that to help you grow is not so in tune with that perception of who you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. To pick up a book and read it is not in tune with the perception of being, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm dying with the flag. I'm doing, you know what I mean? It's not a part of that. So it takes hard work to grow. It takes criticism to grow. You know what I mean? It takes the dudes on the, it takes the homies on the yard to say, oh, you on some nut time. You've been at the library all day. Or why you hanging around dude? You might be hanging around a dude that's not from your hood. And the feds, everything is so geographical. If I'm hanging around a dude from Michigan for a week, the homies from the city going to be like, oh, man, what you, you don't need to mess with us no more. You hang around the Michigan dudes. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So you got to be able to take that topic. criticism. <laughs> yeah, you got to be able to take that criticism to grow because with growth comes criticism. And people have a fear of being criticized. So you got to be able to overcome the fear. We call it the fear of change. You know what I'm saying? So you got so, to be so able to take what that I'm on. Get, this is what I'm getting from that. that that's the fear of the unknown. Yeah. That, that that sounds like to me. It's like uh, somebody might be scared to grow. Yeah. Somebody might not ever want to be like some dude might have the two, three hottest songs you ever heard, but he don't really want to do nothing to promote these songs or put that out there or whatever the situation could be. It could be music. It could be whatever type of business that you in. You might be yeah. the most caring, generous woman in the world, but you are too scared to really open that daycare or try to turn exactly. that vision into something. So that's what that sounds like to me, because this is what I always think for me, again, both sides of the wall. 
the way that I always look at that is bad old heads is yeah. not being given uh, the tools to succeed. Like you said, we all grow up with the same perception of this is what a real nigga is. And yeah. it takes till you get to a, a you takes till you get to a real nigga who tells you, no, nah, this is what it really is. This is what you need yeah. to be doing. This goofy shit that you're talking about is not going to get yeah. you nowhere but back here. Exactly. Uh, so this is one more thing that I wanted to touch on too before we switch him up uh, with something that you brought up. The pictures. To me, like I said, the reason why the pictures were so easy for me to do was because at that time, pictures was $3 to send. Yeah. So if me and anybody what was anything, if I knew this dude for a couple of years and him, like yeah. we had any kind of relationship, he was worth $3. If I'm yeah. going to send you, like I said, my man, like you talking about the wedding pictures, I sent two of my brothers was booked together. I sent them both four envelopes of pictures. So that's 40 joints now. And for the, now I know for the next month, they're going to look at these pictures and they're going to go, damn, Every such day. and such is here. And that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I know how important and how I know how the difference they're going to sound on the phone when they look at the pictures and they see, damn, the kids got this big and damn, what's up with your mom? And like all of that. I know how important yeah. it sounds on the phone. How important is that, though, for somebody to just, like I said, 10 pictures change the nigga whole week? Oh, no, it's very important. It's very important, man. I mean, you you physically trapped inside of an institution, right? At one point, I was at McKean. I was in the same cell for five years, right? Not on not just on the same block, but the same jail. I had the same cell, bathroom, size of a bathroom for five years. This this was my spot. So in order to escape, you got to visually and mentally escape, and the pictures that do that for you. You feel what I'm saying? The pictures give you an opportunity to just go somewhere. You're gonna have dreams about those pictures and everything. So it's just not it's just not the picture. It's like it's the transformation that it allows you to have, the energy that it provides. You know what I mean? It's when when your brother got those pictures, they went there, they went to the way. Don't be true about that. They heard the music oh, yeah. and everything. He, oh, he you told me he said, bro, I feel like he said I bro, I feel like I was there. I, I feel like I was there. <laughs> and it, it, there's no cap. Like to the to the level where he felt like he was there. You know what I'm saying? He felt like he was there. He heard the music. He danced. He looked at the picture, like, oh, that shorty pulled. The chick in the picture, like, he probably already pulled up on. Like, if I was there, I would have pulled up on Shorty. Showing him to your man. Oh, she nice. Oh, look at the Philly Jones. Yeah, all that. It's very, very, very important because it's your only escape. Everything when you do when you get on the gram and you stroll, mm. man, I mean, that's what they do with them pictures. They scrolling. Your man got some pictures. He got 40 pictures. You got 40 pictures. Y'all be in the yard for three, four hours on pictures. I might ask to hold your John, not to do nothing crazy with him, just to look at him and go somewhere. You got to leave prison. So so pictures is very, very, very important. And don't never, if anybody sent you somebody pictures in prison, you're going to always remember it. It's more valuable. Them $3 pictures is more valuable than $100 on the books. It's, it's, it's reality. I'd rather get some pictures than a bag of commissary. This is one more uh, before we switch it up. When you get the family member or the friend or the girl or the person who gets burnt out with the situation, like, damn, you got a dub. I've been rocking for 12 years. I've been rocking for 17 years, and I just can't do it no more. Now, personally, like, personally, I can't relate to that because yeah. I ain't that kind. I ain't that type of friend or brother. Is yeah. if I tell you I got you, then that's the best thing you could ever hear. First conversation, yeah. man, you had. Shout out to Bugsy because I forgot to do that. Shout out to Bugsy. Yeah, 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 Bugs, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When Bugsy first told me, yo, look, it's my man, y'all gotta get with him, and we would get you calling up on the OLF from the um, from the yeah. federal phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we were all be sitting there going, like, this nigga is telling is saying some shit. And it yeah. would be like, when you watch the YouTube back, it would be like, this shit is bad because we just all sitting here, but you saying some shit that was some good shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, my bad. I fucked, I kind of fucked. Individual, though, like I said, for the person who gets burnt out, because I know somebody listening to this is going to say, like you said, you do a 20-year stretch and eventually they get burnt out. Most people do. Not, all, not everybody, but most people do. On your side, when that individual gets burnt out, how do you look at that? Like, this girl been riding for 17 years. My mom been holding me down for 18 years. My son, my nephew, whoever yeah. it is. Yeah. See, on my side, this side, this, me personally, 
I was able to, to I was able to endure that, right? So, but a lot of people can't. So a lot of times I used to have to tell people, and I did, but this was my scenario on how I'm able to do it. I got a 20 years since I got 240 months. If I did not have to do that 240 months every day, I wouldn't. Right? Mm. <laughs> she ain't got to do 240 months every day. So why would she? You know what I'm saying? So I used to have to tell people that, like, listen, it's impossible for them to do it. So mm. some people do do it. But at the end of the day, you just got to take it and do your time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody not going to do it. My sons did it. But my sons was in a situation where they pretty much had to do it. They, they dad was in prison that they loved. So I was, it was a part, prison is a part of their lives, but a female, no, a female is going to come and go in prison. It's just the reality. I mean, the majority of females going to come and go in prison. And that's cool. If you got that mindset, that's cool. But what it do at the same token, and I don't mean to be long winded, but I'm, I'm understanding it now. It does something to you emotionally because it's too easy to cut relationships off for a person like me. You know what I mean? You, you with me? Yeah, I'm, I'm no. This, oh, 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 you, oh what, you locked in. This is yeah, yeah, this is what yeah, I just yeah. said. When when we would yeah. get you on OLF, it would be like yeah. one, you only got a certain amount of time because we was on the phone, yeah. on the federal phone. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it was like rock, we gotta let, let rock go if you need to go. But yeah. damn, rock is saying some shit. Now we all yeah, just want, sitting there going, Yeah, yeah, damn. yeah, nah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I ain't told know you. froze. Nah, bro, I'm I'm typing in all of that. I'm getting oh, my yeah. conversation conversations are currency uh, for me. These things turn into topics, bro. So go ahead. We good. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, um, it could I could become emotionally like um, emotionally scarred, un unstable. Yeah, emotionally yeah. scarred. Cause I could cut a like I could love I could love a female like love them. Like, dang, man, I love I love shorty, but I could cut her off like this because I'm in the habit of doing it. It's subconscious, you know what I mean? Like, it's not that I don't value her or care for her or anything. But I can move on to the next thing because I have so many people move on to the next thing on me. That it's mm -hmm. no, it's not, and I don't feel no type of way. If you move on to the next thing on me, then it's like, dang, it's love. I still see you as love, smile, woo, woo. But I'm able to do it too. And you might not be able to take it the same way that I'm able to take it because you haven't been groomed and trained to take it like that. But I mean, I got hurt in prison too, though. You know what I mean? You're like, damn. You know what I'm saying? But you learn from it. But I'm trying to get over that now out here emotionally. Like, I'm trying to get back to being emotionally and socially free. And that's, now, now, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that's a trial within itself. I was just going, you know what I mean? All right. So this is what I was about to ask you then. So how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you build a relationship? And one is the most important part about that is acknowledging and recognizing that that's the situation. Some people that yeah. have a situation be like that and never be admitting it. The hardest yeah. thing for you to do is keep it real with yourself for most people. So yeah. most niggas would be like, they don't even recognize that that's what they're doing because all the relationships have been for three years. She was rocking and then she just wasn't. Or then I found yeah. out she talked to this one or that one or, you know, however those situations go. And yeah. how do you break yourself out of that? Or are you still trying to figure that one out? Yeah, figuring it out. You know what I mean? But um, like right, everything socially right now, I'm figuring it out. Like, I mean, when I say everything, I mean, you can't think, I ain't gonna say you can't. It's, a, it's, it's my thought that it's impossible for you to think of anything that you do socially on a day to day basis that I'm not in the mix of figuring it out. Right? From something as simple as going to the bathroom and pushing the button to it flushing, I'm figuring it out. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Something that you can't throw toilet paper in the bathroom out here. I'm figuring it out. Like simple things. Hopping on the bus, pulling money, counting money. I, I told I told somebody yesterday, like, damn, I'm noticing that I'm not even counting my money. You feel what I'm saying? Like if I get, say I got $60, I might spend it till I get filed. Like, damn, I ain't even counting my money. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not used to counting money. You know what I'm saying? I, ain't, yeah. I don't, like I might got something in my pocket. Don't even know what I got. It could be seventeen dollars. I don't even know I got seventeen dollars. I just know I had a twenty yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it's, but, it's real like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't used to counting money. You know what I mean? So it's simple things that is there, but I'm acknowledging this as like, all right, this is my task. This is so. That's what I'm on now. You're getting socially. 
acclimated with life on this side. You know what I mean? On this side, on on the other side of the wall. Copy that. Yeah, you're on the other side of the wall. Yeah. So now we this is the part of the show where we switch it up and go in a little bit into you and what you got yeah. going on. This is an interview that you did with Philly Fame that I listened to. Shout out to yeah. Philly Fame. You know, Philly support no Philly situations. You no said doubt. I got a book. I got a book with my whole plan and everything written down in it. One, you got to have Books. a plan. It's what I always <laughs> copy that. It's one thing I always <laughs> try to have that conversation with my friends, brothers, or whoever is coming home. You got to have a plan. Your plan can't be that I'm going to come home and then I'm going to figure it out. No, you got to have, if this don't work, then I'm going to that. If that don't work, then I'm going to that. Like You got to have, yeah. you got to have something you shooting for. You said, yeah. though, that you got a plan and you got some things that you're working on. Let the audience know what that is and what you're trying to get trying to get accomplished. Yeah. Um, what I'm working on now is the next the next, the next, next notch on my plan is the YouTube, um, Welcome Home Rock. I was originally going to do it April, but because of Ram and I, I'm uh, looking for the launch date the first week of May, right? And I'm, I hope it's by the, the first week of May, shout out to Isla, it's, it's going to be published. Uh, Welcome Home Rock is going to be a YouTube channel centered around um, the reality and the understanding on me acclimating myself back to society, as well as the reality and understanding of who I was before I went into prison and the mentality based around that. So it's a before and after of who you are. Say, for instance, you got a brother or, or a boyfriend, he going into prison. I want to be able to give you a better understanding of who he is at this moment and what it may take for him to break out of that mentality versus mm -hmm. versus Boy, all right who he is say now versus who he is why who he is going into prison who he is while he inside of prison and who he is coming out of prison as well and what can you do to help him on all three of those phases that's my goal with welcome home rock because welcome home rock is not just welcome me home mentally. I mean physically. Don't welcome me home physically. Welcome me home mentally. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, it's cool. You could give me some a pair of boots, a, you know what I mean, a jacket and a hat with some money in my pocket. That's gonna be cool physically. But mentally and emotionally, I need that even more than that. So that's what the whole concept of the YouTube channel is. Is welcome me home. You know what I mean? And everything that I'm coming home with. All right, now you brought this up too uh, about your sons. Your yeah. sons was five, one month, and still pregnant. Yeah. What's your plan to do? Is your plan to do any of this with your sons? Is the plan to use these platforms to get them to better understand you? Like how was all of that kind of tying into one? I think what my sons is my sons pretty much have an understanding and an expectation of who I am, right? Because their whole life, you know, I've been writing them letters, we've been talking, and we've been on visits, right? So now I think the main, the, the most important thing that I can do for my son is show and prove, right? Is to um, put action behind my words and to turn my concepts into concrete, basically, to walk my plans out with them by my side. Because I'm very open and assertive with my kids. And with them, my goal is my goal with them is not to have them just to be a part of my plan, but for me to be a part of their plan, right? I don't want them to get mm -hmm. so caught up in this is what my dad want to do, and we don't want my dad want to do. I don't want to teach them what to think. I want to think them how to think, right? I won't want to teach them. I don't want to put my goal. I don't want to put their goals together for them. I want them to be able to like, all right, this is what I want to do, Dad. All right, come on, we're going to Barnes and Noble. We're going to knock that out. We're gonna put I that put, together on the plane. I want you. Yeah. To, I want you to have your own dreams, thoughts, and ideas. But I want you to use this basic method and thought process to get you to get there. Don't exactly. use this. Don't use this to go the walk that I'm walking. Use it to use it for your own thoughts and ideas. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. That's my goal with them. That's and I think that that's I believe that that's my role with them right now. Holler at them, bust it up with them, because at the end of the day. They're not grown, grown, because they haven't grew to the point of maturity, but they are growing up. And it's, it takes me to understand that and respect them as that. You know what I mean? So 
that's what I'm doing now is respecting my son. One last thing before we wrap up episode 59. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on though, Rock. The book. Yeah. We didn't dive into the book though. Can everybody yeah. still purchase the book? Because I bought I bought a copy personally of the book, you know what I'm saying, while you was up yeah. top. Yeah, well, I had the I got the book, right? You can still be dad um coaching book for black and cross me the five. However, what you got right now, you got you got gold, right? Because I took the book off of Amazon once I came home. They got mm-hmm. a little misprints in there that I wanted to correct now that I'm home. Plus, I got a I wrote a whole nother book. It's a whole nother book to go with that book, right? Okay. So I'm gonna put the second edition together to that book. So I'm looking to have this. And I want to, I want to have realistic expectations. So, at first, I wanted to do it by June, but I don't think it's going to be there. I'm looking ahead. It's by the end of the year. Um, you can still be there. Second edition. It's going to be, it's going to be cost. You can still be there. A coaching book for all incarcerated and formerly incarcerated fathers, right? And everything is going to be coming through through the website, lifecoachrocks.com, which is going to be up in a minute. And um, I'm going all I'm taking the all money up, all money in approach. The only um. Other vendor I want to deal with with my books is going to be Moms and Pops. Um, Moms and Pop bookstore is located in urban areas because that's the only thing I'm a partner with. And I'm going, I'm putting this business plan, this uh, marketing plan, and everything that I got down to play. And I'm going to walk the con, I'm going to turn my concepts into concrete, man. That's my goal every single day. You know what I mean? Copy that. Uh, one right, thing, uh, though, I want to, one thing I want to do, I want to make sure I get let anybody know is, though, if you contact me, I am all summer long. I, got, I do have a coaching curriculum that I'm launching soon. I get out the halfway house on June 22nd. Um, and I will be going to any juvenile centers, any recreation centers, any nonprofit organizations, anywhere that I can to, to put together. It's going to be a one hour coaching session, um, group coaching session, um, going around creating a vision board and understanding the passions and visions for youth. So I'm going to be doing that all summer. So anybody that got any type of situation like that, that they will be, um, feel like I could be beneficial to, we could do it via Zoom or we could do it in person. You could contact me on my uh, IG or you could contact me on, on my email. And I guess you would give me throw time the to handle, pick that throw, up. Throw, throw, throw them handles uh, out there because I know you had some issues with the Instagrams. Yeah, yeah, the Instagram was crazy. I, that was a whole other part. I, <laughs> my Instagram is I am I A M underscore coach R-O-C. It's I am I A M underscore Coach Rock. That's my Instagram. My Gmail is I am Coach Rock at gmail.com. So it's I A M C O A C H R O C at gmail.com as well as on IG. My man had some issues with some fake pages. So if anybody's asking you for bread under the name of Rock, it's not from him. Yeah, Rock, yeah, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you coming on episode 59, bro. That's the end of the episode. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>